Back with Marty Mead in the OTR Pop Quiz. Question three. From what iconic Bay State symbol does UMass Boston draw its nickname from? you got options on the screen. Old Ironsides, the Lighthouse, no, the Freedom Trail. Man, the they, Lighthouse. Again, I could have done that without three the three for three. They're known as the Beacons, by the way. Yes. And here's the final question. Screenwriter Brian Helgeland is a graduate of UMass Dartmouth. He won an Academy Award in 1997 for what retro crime drama? Is it The Usual Suspects? Is it Heat? Is it L.A. Confidential? Oh, da, na, 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 this is going to be a guess. Na, na, na. This go. is going to be a guess. All right, and we'll I'm take a swing. Guess with, take uh, a swing. L.A. Confidential. Man, you're four for four. L.A. Confidential, which starred Russell Crowe and Kim Basinger, as you well know. All right, that pop quiz was, was so excellent. easy, we should be arrested. He nailed it. We should be arrested. <laughs> I nailed it. Okay. Uh, college debt, major issue um, on, on the presidential campaign trail. And so we had our Ted Runstein go out and take a quick sample of what voters are thinking. Take a listen to what they said. Among the many issues fighting for traction in the upcoming 2020 election cycle is the never-ending issue of the high cost of college. What is new are the number of candidates who are offering detailed proposals now on everything ranging from free public college to retiring all student debt. I feel like there's been like a social injustice, you know, kind of placed upon people, particularly poor people who went to schools and ended up having to pay like hundreds and thousands of dollars. Are you open to some plan for debt relief for students? Um, I think I would be if it were reasonable. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm open for a total giveaway. Finally, you want to buy a house and start a family and you still are paying all these student loans, so you keep that in the back of your mind, too. So to retire student debt, who is going to pay for it? Good question. That, that is my question. Right. I think we need to look at the cost basis overall and look at whether we're really making effective use of the money that's right. being put into the situation. But the free stuff is just seems over the top to you. No, I think it would be great, but I don't think it's feasible. I mean, unless you have a plan, where's that money going to come from? Elizabeth Warren has an interesting proposal to take 2% of uh, four cents above $50 million. She at least has said, yes, she has it plans. is going to be a wealth tax. Yeah. That's how we're going right. to do it. Yeah. How does that sit with you? I'm not wealthy, so it's perfectly fine. <laughs> <laughs> Not out of my pocket. So yeah. there's a lot to talk about here, but let's start with that free tuition question. In your lifetime, do you think that'll ever happen at state public schools? Um, it depends on how they structure it. You know, a few years ago, the Obama administration had a stimulus package that sent millions and millions and millions of dollars to higher education. And uh, they had a stipulation that said states can't cut how much they uh, spend in higher education. The Patrick administration got a, a waiver so that they could still cut state money and take the stimulus money. If the federal government's going to get engaged in this, and I would love them to get engaged to try to lower the cost, I think they have to make sure that they still uh, have states playing a role in this and then provide some supplemental information. That was a great segment on student debt. Today, there's a guaranteed federal loan where you could get anyone, anyone, regardless of income, can get up to $27,000 no interest while a student is in college. It, economically, it doesn't make sense for anyone not to take that guaranteed no interest to get your degree. So programs like that make sense, but I don't think that people who can afford it should necessarily be subsidized, number one. Secondly, public higher education in this country has been able to keep costs lower than the privates. I think that there should be incentives for the federal government to reward those institutions that are investing in high quality programs and that have lower costs. One of the reasons why applications are up at UMass uh, is because we often affordable uh, value and, and a high caliber education. So I think there has to be some accountability too, and I'm all for the accountability. Mm -hmm. I w I'd love to jump into the political circle, if you don't mind, and put, put the, the hat that you used to wear back on your head for a minute. You know, as, as you watch what's <coughs> unfolding in Washington between the president and the newest congressional members, <coughs> Do you do you get the itch to jump back into that race to jump into that pool? I don't, but it makes me it makes me really sad. The dialogue that's going on, uh, the president's comments that that clearly seem to me to be racist. Um, it's it's a sad day, and and you know what's interesting about it is, you look at the way the government works with Speaker DeLeo, uh, Senate President Spielker, and a Republican Governor Charlie Baker. Why can't Washington look at that model? That's what people want in government. They want people to sit down and work things out. It's, it doesn't make me want to get back into it, but it makes me very sad about the future of the country because I think the dialogue's been terrible. And I worry that if the dialogue that's been going on under this administration is okay, I'm afraid for what's going to happen with future administrations. So you, have you ruled out ever getting back into politics again? I have. I mean, I made a commitment when I came to UMass. The trustees asked me to make a 10-year commitment, and I 
uh, tend to follow through on that. I made the same commitment when I was at UMass Lowell. I had got an opportunity, a couple of opportunities to run for the United States Senate. I'm committed to what I'm doing. I feel passionate about UMass. But there UMass. aren't moments that you'd be thinking, boy, I wish I was down there telling people how exactly I, how I feel. When, I feel. when that itch gets to me, I call <laughs> some of my colleagues and say, why don't you say this? Why don't you do that? <laughs> That's how I get it out of my system. But, uh, <laughs> but I, look, I believe that UMass is the most important institution in Massachusetts. It drives the economy of this state. We educate more uh, of the workforce than any other institution, the top institutions, eight combined. So I feel passionately about what I'm doing, and I believe that work is just, if not more important. Right, Marty, it's great to have you with us. Great to be Thank back. Thank you for coming in. Thank Marty Meehan here Thanks, sitting Janet. in the chair. Our Sunday Roundtable is next, and there is an awful lot to talk about. Massachusetts Congresswoman Ayanna Presley taking point for the squad. What the war of words with President Trump says about the state of politics in this country right now. Stay with us.